I'm talking about comic books a lot lately because there's been a lot going on in that area. Even this morning, I was talking about that comic book artist who wants to lecture manga fans into coming back to comic books, which I find absolutely hilarious. Make sure you go watch that video. There's also been a lot of movie announcements. You have that strange thing going on with AT&T, Discovery, and Warner. I still don't know what's going to happen to DC Comics there. That's that's going to be interesting. I'm willing to bet you're going to see more layoffs over at DC Comics. I, I almost think that they're going to just license that out. We'll, we'll see what happens. But anyway, do comic books matter that much anymore? Kevin Feige recently has come out during an interview and said, comic book popularity, not a factor in movie and TV adaptations. And he's right. He's right. Now, they still have their heavy hitters. They got Spider-Man back. And, you know, they still have a few characters that a lot of people love. The Hulk is still around. Thor. Uh, But Captain America and Iron Man, they're gone. But their logic is, well, they'll just bring in new characters and make them popular. And in some ways, he's not wrong there. Uh, If you weren't aware, I mean, most of the Avengers were never A-list characters at Marvel. It was always the X-Men and Spider-Man and a few other characters, Iron Man, Captain America, uh, even the Hulk, Thor. They were kind of B-tier. They weren't really huge, massive sellers for the longest time. Like I said, it was always the X-Men and Spider-Man. But, you know, they didn't have those characters available to them, so they had to prop up other characters and boost their popularity, and they did a great job at it. So, you know, just because necessarily some of these characters might not do well in the comics doesn't mean they won't do well in film, because you remember Guardians of the Galaxy? Nobody, Nobody cared about them. And I know there'll be some comments, well, I cared about them. I mean, of course, well, some people did, but that doesn't mean that that comic was a huge a huge thing. I'd never read any Guardians of the Galaxy's comics before that movie came out. I read a few after the movie came out, but, you know, they kind of somewhat know what they're doing, which is why I'm, I'm hesitant on the MCU because it seems like they're going, the way that they're talking and pushing things, is it sounds like they're going to make it woke. I mean, you kind of see that now with with what's going on with uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, how they were putting some identity politics in there. And I think somebody at Marvel recently was talking about how, well, before, during the Infinity Saga, the hero was a warrior and a soldier, and now it's something else, making it sound like a hero is an activist. That's the kind of stuff that's going to run down phase four is pushing activism over heroism. And I just don't think that that's going to really appeal to people. But, you know, as far as like Falcon Cap, I I thought they did a better job than the comics in a lot of ways of phasing out Steve Rogers and propping up. Sam Wilson, because remember in the comics they just made they just made Nazi Cap, which everyone hated, because uh, that's just stupid. I, I like the idea of him becoming an old married man with kids. That's that's kind of a perfect send off for Steve Rogers. But um, having him throw all of his values in the toilet, no, that that doesn't work. But even in the comics, they had Sam Wilson stand up on a podium and talk about how he's a He's a hero of socialism now. I mean, they're going to do that in the movies. I really do think that. And that, at the end of the day, is what's going to drive it into the ground. Uh, Riri Williams being a disaster in the comics that nobody likes. You know, we'll see what happens in the movies. I don't have high hopes, but who knows? You know, Maybe they'll be good. As far as what he's saying about comic books, though, uh, I do believe he's 100% right here. I do think... You know, they could shut down the comic division tomorrow. And Marvel Studios would be just fine. You know why? Because they still have decades worth of characters to harvest. uh, Decades worth of stories to harvest. And you'll say, well, they don't have these characters. It doesn't matter. They can take the storylines and just change them around and change the characters that were in them. 
it would just depend on if they actually create a good story with it. Because Kevin Feige's kind of got the crazy eyes now. So I'm kind of wondering if his vision will keep going. We'll see. Uh, WandaVision, kind of hit or miss. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, okay. Uh, the identity politics in it got a little too much at some points. But for the most part, it was an eh show. We'll see. But here's what he actually said. Uh, In an interview with Men's Health, Feige spoke about the upcoming Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. During the interview, Feige referenced the X-Men and the Blade films when he started. That sort of proved early on that it wasn't about how famous the character was, but how great their potential was for becoming a cool movie or series of movie. He added, Shang-Chi has had that potential for so long. Uh, Now, I agree with him about Blade, Nobody cared about Blade before that movie. I mean, a few people did, but he, he was not really that big of a factor. Uh, the X-Men, though, no. X-Men was destined to be a massive property. That was one of the biggest comics of all time until you guys ran into the ground because you didn't have the rights anymore. So I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. Blade, yes. Blade, yes. Um, so, according to Men's Health writer Evan Romano, Feige also explained the reason why Shang-Chi did not show up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe despite being on their list for a long time is because there was limited space to fit in characters needed during the lead-up to Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Feige stated, once we finished what we call now we call now the Infinity Saga, we rolled up our sleeves and said, okay, what's next? What are we going to kick off next? The next sort of evolution of the MCU post our first big saga, and that's why Shang-Chi was at the very top of that list, he said. Now, that's BS. They still had B-tier characters. Captain America and Iron Man, not the biggest names, but still fairly popular that you can work with because at the end of the day, they are good and interesting characters. And that dynamic of that original Avengers team is always going to be iconic. But you're now boosting unknown characters off of the success that you've already garnered with the Infinity Saga. So this success, the success of these characters will will really handle, will really matter with how they, what's really going to matter is how they handle it. How they handle these characters. If they make this, these new characters woke and full of identity politics, it's going to backfire. Nobody's going to watch it. Okay. Right now, you're still operating on good faith from the Infinity Saga. Whether or not they can step up and make these characters popular, well, that's going to depend on them. Because it can happen. Uh, You could boost Shang-Chi up into an A-list character if they do it right. If they do it right. And make it work. That's what it's going to come down to at the end of the day. If they make it all kinds of woke, it's not going to work, and nobody's going to want to watch it. And that's just a fact. And that will end up accelerating the end of the comic book movie. It really will. So are they going to do it right, or are they going to do it wrong? We'll see. As for comic books, uh, those aren't needed anymore. Don't need comic books anymore. You can get rid of those. Uh, And I think, you know, people say, well, I can use them for R&D. Nah, they already have R&D and storyboards through the old comics. Uh, they don't really need the new comics. Um, we'll see what happens. But I, I do think you have a little bit more re- refinement in the MCU, and they could take a bad idea and make it good. We'll see. We'll see if they can actually do it. Um, I know I just said that they can do it, because they've proven they can. But... Before, they really didn't have a lot of the identity politics in their movies. And now they're kind of injecting them, and that's where the concern is. And when you start going down that road, the story always collapses. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, take a moment. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Uh, There's something going on right now, and they've been unsubscribing people. So just take a second and double check on that and subscribe if you're new.